Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of React WooCommerce theme. Now in the previous video, we looked at the demo of the Stripe checkout. And in this video, we're going to continue further in understanding how to create the Stripe checkout functionality. So what we're going to do is basically, uh, if you click on one of these products and if we do add to cart, and then if I go to checkout, uh, you can see that we have got this Stripe option and then we can place the order. So how do we do this? The first thing we're going to do is create a, another option called Stripe to select. So this tutorial is basically going to be the walkthrough of the code. I won't actually be coding. Since this is an advanced tutorial, you can always uh, take a look at the code base. The code base is available on the Woo Next. You can check that out and then let's continue. All right, so we have a checkout page and this is where the checkout form is coming from. So let's go inside of this. So inside of this checkout form, you can see there's a lot going on, but what we're interested in is the component called payment modes. So inside of this payment mode, we are passing the input and uh, we have gone ahead and added another label called Stripe so that if the user goes ahead and select Stripe over here, then that option will be selected and it's going to be handled differently. All right. So once we do that, once we go ahead and once the user clicks on this stripe option, then handle on change is going to be called. And if you take a look at the handle on change, so here in the handle on change, this basically goes ahead and sets the value of the option that has been selected. All right. Now, when the form is submitted, so this handle form submit button is submit function is called. So you can see this is our form, which is this one. So this is our form, right? When the form is submitted, handle form submit is called and handle form submit is going to go ahead and check if it's the stripe mode or not. If it is stripe mode, which means stripe option is selected here in the input over here, this one then it's going to call the handle stripe checkout and it's going to pass the input which means whatever user has filled in terms of the full name and all of that stuff you can check that out in the previous video i've explained all of that there so once he's filled all of that information then handle stripe checkout function will be called which which is our custom function is going to pass the products that have been uh, added to the cart which are these products if there's any error uh, this is going to pass the function which we have created to clear the cart mutation it's going to set the Stripe auto processing to true so that we have a loading at the bottom and it's also going to pass a function to create the order data. Okay. So this is the handle Stripe checkout function and I've added that inside of the utils checkout. All right. Now, before we go ahead and jump on to what this handle Stripe checkout function does, there are a few things we need to do. Now, in order for us to use the Stripe checkout, we need to install some of the packages. One is the Stripe, Stripe.js. So if you take a look at this NPM package, so this package wraps the global Stripe function provided by Stripe.js script as an ES module, right? And this one is the official package of Stripe. So it's all reliable and trustworthy, so we can use it. Okay, so once we install that package, there's another package we'll be using and that will be called NextStripe, NextStripe beta. Okay, so take a look at this one. Um, so that's the NPM package. So if you take a look, this has been developed by a developer of Stripe itself, which means that it's again, it's reliable. So this package basically simplifies the server side uh, Stripe workflow in Next.js. Uh, and it basically gives us some of the functions that we, if we had to do it ourselves, then we had to write more code. Okay, so you can read more about this uh, particular package here, but these are the two packages that we will be installing. Okay, and then we also need the micro so this micro npm package, if you take a look, so we're going to be using micro for buffering. Uh, so as you can see, for passing incoming request body, we included an async function buffer. So we'll be using this for buffering. And I'll talk about this one later in the video. Okay. So once you've installed these two packages, which is in fact, three packages, which is the stripe, stripe, stripe JS, next stripe beta and micro. So you just, you just need to go over here and hit it. I have already installed it, so I won't be stalling it again. Okay. The next thing you do is basically get the API keys for your stripe. So if you haven't already created a stripe account, go ahead and create one 
and then go to API keys over here and then go to developers, click on the API keys and then this is where you're going to get the API keys. Next thing you do is come over here uh, in the .env file. So if you haven't already created one, please create one. And then take example from the .env example and go ahead and add the Stripe secret key and Stripe publishable key. So public publishable key is this one, okay? And then secret key is this one. So you need to go ahead and add that into this environment variables. Okay, so once you've done that, you need to create a file called dot 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 next stripe dot js. So this is as per the requirement of this particular package that we're using the next stripe. And as you can see, it says that create this particular file. So I have already done that. So if you go to pages, API, Stripe. So I've created a folder called Stripe and inside of Stripe, I have created this file, which is uh, dot 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 next stripe dot JS. And inside of this, uh, I'm just importing next stripe from next stripe and then exporting default next stripe and passing my stripe key, which is my secret key, right? So that's what you need to do over here. Uh, and that's exactly what we are following, all right? Once you do that, uh, you would also need to create a webhook endpoint and the reason why we need to create the webhook endpoints so that once the order is placed and the payment is made on the successful payment, it should call our endpoint and let it know that the payment is successful. And once it is successful, then in this endpoint, we'll be able to go ahead and uh, update the order status. So initially we'll set the order status to pending. And then finally, when it's done, it will be processing. All right. So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And do star my repository like all the beautiful 443 people have. And do follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Koditech. And do follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran H. Sayed. All right. So I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.